A couple of nights ago, I was doing GameCube BIOS corruptions on a Discord live stream in a private server that I'm part of, and a lot of my friends were asking me after that how I got them. So today I figured I would show you how. This is how you can do it yourself. The first thing you want to do is to go to the Red Scientist Laboratories website and download and install the real-time corruptor launcher. I like to download and install the latest version, 5.1.0. Then you want to download the Dolphin, the Dolphin, just Dolphin, and now when you click on that, once it's installed, it will open up two windows here. You have the real-time corruptor engine and the Dolphin emulator. The first thing I like to do is to create a path for the ROMs, WADs, and ISO files that will run emulated games. So let's create one. Go over to my, this is how I sort them out, desktop, real-time corruptor, Dolphin ROMs, right here. Select that folder, boom. There we go. So we now have a list of ROMs that I will be using. We have three Wii, we have three Wii ROMs and one um, GameCube ROM. Now, we need to set up some settings to make sure it all runs proper. Go over to the, go back up into the settings, the config tab, go to the interface and turn off everything underneath render window. Usually at the usually that just gets in the way of things when you're trying to run a corruption. Then go over to the um, GameCube tab and make sure that skip main menu under IPL settings is unchecked. This is if you want to do the GameCube intro corruption because and if this is grayed out, it means you don't have the BIOS file in the right folder. And I'm not going to show you how to get that file because technically it's illegal. However, the new versions of regular Dolphin emulator come with its standards, so you can fetch it from there or you can just search up IPL.bin. That's I'm not going to tell you what websites to get it from because of, you know, legal implications. But still, I now have that file and we're good. So Next thing you want to do is go over to graphics, hacks, and make sure immediately present external frame buffer is disabled. If this is enabled and you run a corruption, you will run into a graphical bug and not the good kind. So now we need to set up our corruption engine. So this is the one I like to use. I like to use the vector engine, unlock it and set it to 32 bit engine precision with dolphin math on both the limiter and value lists. Crank the intensity up to about 96,000, sometimes 100,000, depending on how, uh, how good you're feeling, and leave the blast radius as is. Now, let's go ahead and first open up a ROM and immediately pause the emulation. Now we need to go to the Windows Glitch Harvester tab, which is actually what we used to use before the real-time corruptor was a thing. And we need to create a save state. So, what you do now is hit this change button, press the save button, and I like to give that a name. Let's call that Funny Dancing Cube, like so. And I also set up some hotkeys in the configuration tab on here. So every time that I press uh, number pad minus, it will load a new save state, a corrupted save state in the Windows Glitch Harvester. So we go back to the engine config. I'm going to unpause the emulation. Okay, so that's great and all, but I want to do, I want to give it some tumors. Where's the... Oh, there it is. Okay. Nope. Nope. Oh, God. So, yeah, that's how you do corruptions. Let's do some more. Oh, real quick, I think I should mention. Whenever you do a save state... Shut up, phone. Whenever you do a save state corruption, it will actually save the corruption that you're doing in right here in your stash. And you can actually send these to a stockpile for later recording or replaying, depending on how funny it is and if you want to do a video or not. Let's do some more here. Oh, God. <laughs> Pink Nintendo. Usually, if it's a black screen, I just keep reloading until I get something. And the cube's gone. Yep. There it is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and change some settings up here. I'm only breaking the things that can be broken. That's how the vector engine works. So, so that one. I've actually adjusted the precision. Oh, my goodness. I've adjusted it to the highest it can be at 64-bit. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is great. Well, goodbye sound, I guess. So yeah, that's how you do GameCube BIOS corruptions. Oh my sweet heavens. <laughs> oh no. Alright, I'm stockpiling that one. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stockpile that one. Save as help is never 
incoming dot bin. <laughs> you can actually save these stockpiles as SKS files and load them later too. So yeah, that's how you do BIOS corruptions. So happy you guys could tune in for this one. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Let's get a good one here to close out. Come on. There we go. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys.